The TV streamer by Google has officially been released, and this latest streaming slash smart hub device aims to bring you an experience their previous Chromecast TV model couldn't deliver. Google's newest device comes with a $99 price tag, bringing it in the range of some of the most expensive streaming devices on the market today. After my first week of use, let's talk about the good, the bad, and everything you need to know before picking one of these up. I make weekly videos helping people like you save money on streaming services and learning how to optimize their device. If you like this kind of content, the best way to support me is by hitting the subscribe button right down below. The increased price tag brings an array of improved specs to the Google Google TV streamer. The new TV streamer comes with 4K resolution, Dolby Vision, and Dolby Atmos. The device itself comes with a new sleek design, which is actually really well made. It also comes with your typical HDMI out port, a brand new Ethernet port, and a USB-C power port. Unfortunately, Google did not include an additional external USB port. However, they did give you 32 gigabytes of storage to try to counteract that impact. You can still add a USB port, however, that will require you to purchase an OTG cable, and I have included a link down below for one that should work with the Google streamer. They also bumped up the RAM to four gigabytes which is pretty massive for a device like this. A new upgraded remote is also included with the streamer. This new remote ends up being around half an inch bigger than the previous model. They also did everybody a favor and rotated the volume buttons from the side to the front of the remote. Now it's basically the same thing, but if you always thought the Chromecast TV remote was just a little too small for your hands, you're really gonna like this one. The TV streamer is the first device to run the brand new Android TV 14, which should be a pretty big deal. Until we learn that yes, Google went and pushed Android TV 14 to their Chromecast as well, which are now officially discontinued. Android TV 14 brings a bunch of new improved features to the TV streamer. One of the big new features is energy saver mode, which actually gives you three different options to choose from. There's low power mode that will essentially disconnect your device from the network while your device is sleeping, unless it's for a critical update. And then there's the opposite end of the spectrum, which is high performance mode, which will give you extra features while your device is in standby. And then the optimized mode, which is probably closer to the default that most devices use now. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the TV streamer has adopted this feature. I can't seem to find it anywhere in settings. So if I'm missing out on it and you guys know where, let me know down below in the comments. Google states that Android TV 14 should see major improvement gains on low RAM devices. And this is pretty exciting news because the Google TV Chromecast, which is a low RAM device is getting upgraded to 14. As well, the actual boot up time of the device should be around four seconds quicker. This along with the improved specs on the TV streamer should see a major gain on the Chromecast. So let's go ahead and test that out. Starting with the Chromecast TV 4K. From the second I plugged it in, it took a total of around 40 seconds to boot completely up to the main menu. As for the Google TV streamer, it did not disappoint. It actually only took 30 seconds. That's around a 25% improvement from the lower tier model. Those are some pretty major gains. I feel like AI features are being introduced into every new tech product. My robo vacuum mop upstairs has a bunch of integrated features. And that goes the same with the Google TV streamer. Because it runs Android TV 14, that means it has some brand new AI features for you to take advantage of. It includes AI recommendations based on shows and movies you've watched across a variety of different streaming apps. There's also some AI generative text features. And on top of that, they also have auto AI translation movie titles based on your official language you have your device set to. It's safe to say there's gonna be more and more AI features coming to operating systems in the near future. There has been a small glitch with Android TV 14 where every time you reboot your device, your app's permissions automatically go back to defaults. This isn't a huge deal, you just have to go into your app's permission every time and change it back. So as long as you don't fully reboot your device and you just put it in standby or sleep mode, this shouldn't really bother you right now. Otherwise, it's just a regular Google 
TV operating system. They haven't made any major changes to it, but if you want something different from Android TV, like on the Nvidia Shield or the Fire TV OS, this is a pretty good option. With a new processor, increased RAM and more storage, we should see a major increase in performance from the Chromecast TV and in fact, we definitely do. If you've always had a Chromecast TV and you upgrade to the streamer, you're gonna notice it's more responsive, it boots up quicker, and apps just load a little bit faster. AFTV News has completed their benchmark test where they stack the Google TV streamer up with a bunch of other devices they've tested in the past. And the device finished in eighth in terms of CPU testing still ranking pretty far behind devices such as the Nvidia Shield and Fire TV use in both single and multi-core use. Now this isn't a huge deal because we don't often push our devices to their full capabilities, but it's still something to be aware of. Keep in mind the Fire TV Cube and Nvidia Shield at this point are like three to four year old devices. Matter and Threads are two huge smart device integrations that come in the Google TV streamer. Devices that contain Matter chips are essentially compatible across an array of smart devices, not just Google-based ones. That is, as long as the device also has a Matter logo on it. Interesting enough, Matter was actually created by a number of huge companies, including Amazon, Apple, and Google, to further improve smart device compatibility. Threads basically acts as a mesh network, which allows devices to connect their internet to each other. This in turn will improve network connectivity, which will allow smart devices to respond just that much quicker to your request. Unfortunately, I only have Eufy cameras and Govi lights and they didn't seem compatible when I was trying to connect them, so I wasn't able to test a lot of the new features. But looking at some of the information from the Google TV streamer official page, you can see you can control thermostats, lights, and even your cameras directly from your device. There are a few things Google legitimately missed on with the TV streamer. For one is the storage compatibility. You can use XFAT storage, but it is not compatible with NFTS drives. I think that combined with the fact that you need an OTG cable in 2024 is pretty crazy. If you're a dedicated streaming device and not just a dongle style one, you 100% should have an extra USB port. There were also some rumors that this might be a 64-bit device. Currently, there's only a few on the market, the Nvidia Shield and the Fire TV Box 2, which is actually disc continued. So they did have a chance to kind of separate this in one way from the Fire TV Cube, but they just decided to keep it 32-bit. Maybe a potential miss by Google. So here's my final thoughts on the Google TV streamer. There is no doubt about it. This is improved from the Chromecast TV. Now, whether it's $60 improved from that device, I'm not 100% sure on that. We also have to remember there is the ONN Pro Box, which is around $40 cheaper, that offers a lot of the same options and features as the TV streamer. It is a little bit slower, but you're getting almost a 50% saving. And that one actually has a USB port. We also have to mention that they did upgrade the Google Chromecast TV 4K and HD to Android 14 TV. That means besides matter and thread compatibility, this offers pretty much the same things. Now, is it a little bit slower? Yes, but if you're just the average Joe that is streaming shows and movies on different apps, this will probably do just as well for a fraction of the price. If you want a premium experience, there is no doubt the Google TV streamer offers that, especially if you are widely integrated with smart devices that already have Matter compatibility or are Google, then it's definitely a good purchase. I've included the link to the Google TV streamer down below. Now this is not an affiliate link, so I do not get any kickbacks. If you guys are interested, you can purchase it right there. If you guys like this review and you wanna support the channel, two great ways to do that is either by purchasing a VPN down below in the description, or you can get one of our YouTube memberships, which are only $1.99 a month and really help support the content. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you in the next one.